Good morning, dear saints, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, which is the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Please read along with me in the scriptures we'll be looking at today. Read along with me because I make mistakes and it's important for you to see this. Okay, to be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. I have to warn you, your saints that are sensitive to hostility. You're going to see angry, mean Brad today. Be, um, because we are going to be addressing... <laughs> so, hell's not eternal, huh? But, okay. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. A <laughs> Absolutely stupid. Stupid. I also gotta, I gotta tell you, you idiots who come around uh, denying that hell is, that number one, that there is a hell, and number two, that it's not eternal, or, or number three, that it's a form of purgatory. Um, you come around with your stupidity in the comment section, it's like, well, the Greek, you don't understand the Greek, sir, whatever you said. Ain't nobody got time for that. You're out of here. No, ain't got time for your stupidity. That's stupidity. Okay? And like you Catholics that also come, there's nothing worse than a Catholic who thinks they know something about Scripture. There's nothing worse. <laughs> I'm telling you what. Uh, you, you stupid Catholics come around uh, trying to uh, turn attention away that Rome is Mystery Babylon and, and whatever the one thing, the one guy doesn't even speak English uh, came around trying to, you know, defend Rome, saying that it's not Babylon. You, you're out of here. Nobody's got time for your stupidity. Okay? Nobody's got time for your stupidity. Okay? I'm not going to be kind about it either. You guys are a bunch of idiots. All right? You are. Denying that Rome is mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, you might have been brought up into that, okay? A novice is a different subject. But you guys who go to a war to say that Rome is not a uh, mystery Babylon, like Eric Lionheart and stuff like that, you guys are a bunch of idiots, you devils. You can go to hell. And those of you who deny the existence of hell, Deny the eternality of hell. That's an actual word, too, by the way. I looked that up. Um, a novice, again, a novice, a babe, okay? That's a different thing. But when you've been saying you've been crazy for five, ten years or whatever, and you're denying that hell exists or that it's eternal, you're stupid. There's, I'm not going to be nice about it. I'm not going to be kind about it. You're an idiot. You are. You're an idiot and you're stupid. Okay? All right? Now, the prevailing thing about this, number one, in Genesis chapter 3. Now, for saints, this is just a chewing of the cabbage again. We're going over things that is readily known of the same. Even, and I do not like to say this, but it is a fact. Most of even the sleazy, believest, fake grace idiots themselves can get that one right about the eternality of hell. Even they, the free gracer, that says it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Even they are right about, well, <laughs> yeah, dude, hell's eternal, okay? Even they get there. Even idiots like Jack Smack can get that one right, okay? But in Genesis chapter 3, 
Where does this all, what is the genesis of all this nonsense? Genesis is the beginning, is beginning. Now the serpent, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Yes, Lucifer, Satan, is a created being. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. There it is. There is textual criticism. Jesuitical, of course. Textual criticism. There is the denial of hell. There is the denial of eternality of hell. There is the denying of rightly dividing the word of truth. There is the denial of the death, burial, and resurrection. Yea, hath God said. Oh, and right there too. Like I already said, textual criticism. There is, well, the Greek in the Strong's Concordance. Which, which Greek? Does, look, 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 okay? I'm not being nice, so kind about this. You idiots out there that go to the Greek. Number one, which Greek are you talking about? Answer that. The Greek in the Strong's Concordance. Okay, which Greek are they using? What number of the Elan are they using? What number of the uh, United Bible Societies? Are they using Metzger uh, or whatever? Are they basing it off of West Cotton Hort? And guess what, genius? Those Greek things, the Elan, a United Bible Society, West Cotton Hort, okay, Metzger, they all differ in Greek wordage. They don't agree. Okay, it's not, they're not like the Texas Receptus where the majority of the Greek manuscripts agree with. Okay, yours that you are battling for are like the 2%, which the, the minority, which is held in Rome. Okay, which Greek? And here's the thing. Who decides what is what? You idiots that go to the Greek. You are some of the most devilish, pond scum, vile villains to mankind and to Christ that there is. Okay. Hey, look, look. If you if if you want to, for your own giggles or whatever, if you want to learn Koine Greek, that, dude, knock yourself out. Go right ahead. If that's something that floats your boat and you want to learn Koine Greek. Go for it. But see, when you start trying to correct the perfect standard, the authorized version, with a multitude of Greeks, Greek texts, which these Jesuit trained cemeterians, yea, have God said scholars, not even they themselves can agree which one is perfect. Well, the originals. Well, oh, you mean the ones? They mean the ones that was actually penned by the hand of so and so. Those are originals, and they themselves will tell you they don't exist. You people that go to the Greek, you Catholics, you Christians, the Lord rebuke you. You are denying the word of God. And the very thing that you deny, the Lord and hell, is what is awaiting you. Unless a miracle happens. Because, see, what happens with these guys? We're, we're going to continue by a little rabbit here. Okay? There are three main trains of thought, as it were, with the thing about hell. There are three. Number one, which is the most common one that I have personally run into. Because of the insidious, wicked, God loves you, unconditionally. God's not angry at you. God loves you so much. Because of that stupidity, that vile, rank, disgusting doctrine, that God unconditionally loves the Christ-rejecting sinner. He does not. He does not. Links in the description box, but see, you guys are lazy. You guys are lazy. You don't want to, you don't want to do the work. You don't want to put in the effort to see you don't want to be a Berean. You want to be spoon-fed everything because you're too lazy. But 
as a result of the God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. God loves you so much more than you could ever know. Because of that prevailing nonsensical stupidity, the thought that a loving God would send your loved ones to hell, right? And brother, that you'll find out as if you haven't already, sister, that is the one that I personally have run into the most. What's the problem with it? Number one, they're working off the lie that God loves you unconditionally, that God loves, present tense love, loves appears twice in the scripture. Never in context of God loves you, okay? It's within the context of the Lord and Song of Solomon loving his bride, the body of Christ, and in Proverbs 7, the whore, you know, Rome, giving her loves to you to seduce you and damn you to hell, okay? Only appears twice in Scripture, okay? But see, they're working off the premise that, okay, they hear from Christian, God loves you. No, he doesn't. Look, look, do, do. Okay. You, you're getting messed up with these universalist Catholic idiots, these wicked free grace pond scum. God loves you unconditionally. Oh, but God doesn't love the um, the God fearing saint <laughs> who rightly, who truly rightly divides the word of truth. <laughs> anyway, God does not love you. Get that through your thick head. God does not love you. John 3.16, dear friend, is not the gospel. Because did the death, burial, and resurrection happen at that time? <laughs> no, it didn't. But see, these people are basing that off of that absurd heresy that God loves you. Okay, so they, they, they equate. It's like, okay. God loves me unconditionally, but yet God's going to send me to hell? And of course, and, and this is, and I understand the train of thought on it, but it's not true. The fact that you don't want, my mother's in hell. My mother is in hell. My aunt, my uncle, People I used to call friends, even when I was a lost man, lovers, okay? They're in hell, burning for eternity, okay? And, and see, these cute guys like to bring up the difference between hell and the lake. Of, we'll, we'll address that later. This is, a, you know, this is a milk video, but, I mean, for those of you who deny hell, this is, you're not going to get this because you don't want to. But you're going to be warned. You don't want to accept the fact that someone you loved who died without Christ is in hell. I understand that. But scripture is plain. If the Lord doesn't save you, there's only two options. Heaven or hell. Where are you going to go? You reject the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. His death, burial, and resurrection. Coming to him broken, contrite, and in fear of him calling upon his name and he saves and seals you, uh, unless he does that, unless the Lord save you by his grace through your faith, you're going to go to hell and burn forever. Okay? That is just the name of the game. I understand that there are those of you who want to deny the existence of hell because your loved ones are down there. I understand that, but that is not... So what? I mean, sorry. So what? Okay? Number two. The people who love their sin. Okay? The people who love their sin. We're, we're not done in Genesis chapter 3, but go to Jeremiah chapter 44. The people who love their sin. It's like, I don't want your God. And another thing, too, uh, with these idiot soul annihilationists, apparently the stupid uh, uh, Unitarians... Uh, Catholics, you know, hell is just a purgatory. Uh, they'll burn up for a little while. And then that's just so stupid. But 
soul annihilationism. The Russellites, the original uh, Jehoes, were soul annihilationists. Uh, I think they still are, okay? Shepherd Chapel, Bullingerite idiots, they are soul annihilationists. What is that? They, they take a part in Matthew, which we are going to look at, and twist it and say, well, okay, God's merciful. You're going to go to hell and burn up, and then your soul's going to be extinguished, and that's it. No. No, that's denying the eternality of hell. You got the ones who don't want to believe in hell because their loved ones are there. I understand that, but that's tough apples, pal. That's just a fact. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And unless the Lord save you, you're going to hell. Period. Okay? But there are those who was like, I don't want your God. And hey, if the soul is annihilated, why do I need your God anyway, right? Right? Because, hey, all I'm going to do is just go to hell, feel a little pinch for a while, burn up, and then that's it, right? But like brother brought up on this subject, it's like even a few moments in hell can't even begin to equate with the, like, 80, 70 years of life of uh, pain every day, okay? Even if that were the case, the extreme things that are in hell, where their worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched, uh, still, still, okay? But see, these guys who like their sin don't want to give it up. Why go to your God if all I'm going to do is go to hell, burn up for a little imps? That's it, right? Jeremiah 44. Jeremiah 44, verses 7 on verse 10. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls, to cut off from you man and woman, child and suckling out of Judah, to leave you none to remain, and that ye provoke me unto wrath with the work of your hands, burning incense unto other gods, yourselves, Okay. In the land of Egypt, whither ye be gone to dwell, that ye might cut yourselves off, and that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth? Have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers, and the wickedness of the kings of Judah, and the wickedness of their wives, and your own wickedness, and the wickedness of, their, of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem? And skipping, oh, oh, verse 10. They are not humbled even unto this day, neither have they feared, nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. Verses 15 now, on to 17 now. Then all the men which knew that their wives, yea, hath God said, that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Petros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us, in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Don't hearken. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. Ye shall be as gods. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. Uh, that's the Roman Catholic Mary, by the way, queen of heaven here. That's what this is talking about. Okay, The equivalent today is the Roman Catholic Mary, which is not the Mary of Scripture. Okay, As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, is tradition, man! Okay? And Catholics... Exalt tradition, even over their Bible, even over their catechism. In the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. Back to Jer uh, Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat. Of every tree of the garden. 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. He said that. Neither shall ye touch it. He didn't say that, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know, he's hiding something from you, right? Yeah. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, and good and evil. Which leads on to the third, the most dangerous, the go to the Greek idiots. When you see the Greek word, see, the word of God went through a seven language purification. I can't name them all offhand. They are in a video which will be in the description box, okay? All right, which we will, you know, will be for you if you want to watch it. Fine, if not, then shut up. Go to hell then and roll you up another one, okay? But the Word of God went through a seven language purification to arrive at the perfect standard, which is in English. This is what you use, the English, the authorized version, to translate into other tongues. The Greek which one? The Hebrew, which one? Were stepping stones, served a purpose to arrive at the authorized version. They are obsolete. You don't need them anymore. But see, when you go to the Greek, which one? Which one? Okay. Remember, the Greek wordings have variating uh, variation in meaning. Well, it could mean this. It could mean that. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Then, okay, if this Greek word could mean this, if it could mean that, then who decides what is right? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. It's like, it's, you can liken it onto these guys who say, find a Bible that suits you. You're the standard. Your preference. You. You shall be as gods. Okay? All right, look, look, dude. You want to learn that language? Knock yourself up. Fire up that lexicon and smack yourself over the head all day, all night. Go for it. But when you're trying to use a Greek to correct or justify yourself, because you don't want to deal with the fact or the reality. Or, like that bald-headed idiot from England, okay, that universalist, versalist, Catholic, pond scum twit, okay? Look, by the way, you, you and I are enemies. Don't send me that man's stuff, okay? I had a couple of people who are free gracers who hate me and I hate them with perfect hatred because they serve another God. Uh, even some of you guys were sending me, hey, very good. No, I'm not going to name that guy's name. It's what he wants. Okay? You guys who go to the Greek are dangerous. And you guys need to be stopped. You guys need to keep your mouth shut. And I pray that the Lord shut your mouths. I really do. Because you guys who go to the Greek, you're doing it to find a loophole to justify your sin and to justify yourself. Okay? Well, the, it could mean this. It could be rendered this. Yea, hath God said. That's all it is. Okay? And you guys throw to us saints, well, you're saying they got to learn English. You're saying that they have to learn scriptural Hebrew and Koine Greek to perhaps even have an idea of maybe what God has said. You guys are dangerous. And I hope you guys get silenced and shut up because you're poisoning people's minds and guiding them to hell with your yea hath God said the Greek. Okay? Every one of you. You scum. Yeah, you heard me right. You are my enemy because you know why? You are Christ's enemy. You're the enemy of Christ because you are your own God and you're the one. Well, I like that wording. I like that. That sounds better to what? Your flesh. I'm going to find a Bible that suits me. Job 40. 
Job 40. Hmm. Here, here's something to hopefully kick you guys in the stones. And incidentally, the people, with the exception of the first class, of the people who want don't want to believe that their loved ones are in hell. Okay, look. They're in hell. You got to accept that or go there yourself. Okay? All right? But, you know, when you got someone who wants their sin, it's like, well, hey, if I'm just going to go and burn up for a little while, what's the point? Soul annihilationism. Okay? And, of course, you, you devilish. Yea, hath God said, textual critic devils. You scumbags. Yeah. yeah. I have no regret or remorse of offending you or insulting you. You're damning people to hell. Lord rebuke you. May God have mercy on your wretched souls. Which are going to go get burned up right away or be purified in hell to go to heaven, right? You're stupid. If you really believe that, I, I, I'm. If you really believe that, you're stupid. You're an idiot. You're stupid. Okay. All right. A novice isn't. We're not talking about novices. Someone who does not know. We're talking about you guys who knowingly reject the truth. You guys are stupid. You guys are stupid. Take a fence, take a gate, and let it, no, let it hit you in the buttocks on the way out. Job 40, verses 1 on verse 14. The Lord speaking here, by the way, to Job. Oh, and if you want any gist on this kind of stuff, the, there will be a two-part thing on Job in the description box where we kind of glean through this, okay? Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Oh, boy. Well, the Greek could be God then say that. I mean, it could be rendered this. It could be rendered this. I, I go to the original. Oh, shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. You know, in the book of James, he warns uh, people to not be many masters because you'll give a you know greater condemnation. It's like some of you guys, especially that that uh, Dudley Do Right idiot who's teaching Calvinism, dude, you you need to get your head out of Rome's buttocks and get right with the Lord and actually get saved because you're teaching people heresy. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jingle all the way, pal. Okay? Yeah, you, you people who are knowingly teaching heresy, you're instructing God? Well, the Greek could mean, it could be this, it could. Find a Bible that's. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. But what is the... It's, well, well, see, God, Lord, Lord, you know, the, the Greek, the Greek, you know, there are so many. Yea, has, there's a whole variety of a, a Greek word could mean this. It could mean that. You can't nail it down. You, you go to the Greek guys. Jesuit trained cemeterians. You guys are in a lot of trouble with the Lord. Because the minute you start going to the Greek, like I said, dude, if you, for your own amusement, if you want to learn, go, go ahead. But see, when you start going to that to try to correct the scripture because A, you don't like what God has said, Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the world one and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. You think you know something. See, that, that, you know, I, I, that guy scared the hell out of you. Okay? 
before the Lord. And he's like, you're going to instruct me. You're going to tell me what I said wasn't right? Going to the Greek, trying to correct what I said? Come on, boy, who do you think you are? That ought to scare the hell out of you. But there's no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 8. This is every single one of you Catholic. You know, the mother of the, the mother whore of, and the daughters of the whore. Um, here, you know, you Catholics who deny that hell is, exists or is real or, or that it's permanent or whatever, you know. Oh, that's right, you believe hell, that's where the saints are going. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? And, and, and th there it is. If we stop this, it works, we're not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> If we stop this video right here, enough has been said to you, you hell denier, you uh, the eternality of hell denier, you universalist, you Catholic, you wicked devil. Well, the Greek says, which one? It could mean a, very, uh, a whole plethora effect of things. So you're disannulling his judgment and condemning him that you may be righteous. You know, when someone, when I got like that, that punk over there uh, at that church building down the way, when the minute I personally encounter anyone who says the Greek, shut down and it's like, okay, it's, we're done. We're done. I, uh, number one, I'm not going to argue. Okay, because these guys with their textual Jesuitical thing that they do, they keep the mill going unless the saints like, okay, uh, let them alone. They're the blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both of them are going to go into the ditch. Okay, I, you know, and it's like, <laughs> okay, shake my raiment, you know, get the dust off of my feet. It's like, see ya, I'm going to, the Lord got me somewhere else, okay? The impossible is possible with God, okay? It is. The impossible is possible with God. But uh, when you get talking to one of these Greek people, um, it's very difficult to talk with them um, because they are their own standard. They don't tell you which Greek they're using. And duh, 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 duh. <laughs> whoever you are, there are many editions of Greek. Many. Nesselon is up to 28. There are 18 or 19 of the Texas Receptus. Metzger and so many other people that have done their own Greek manuscript. And they all differ. Okay? Whenever I hear, encounter someone who goes, like, goes to the Greek, I don't take them seriously at all. But I take them seriously as a threat to the truth of the gospel. But themselves, I don't take you seriously at all. But see, people have been trained with the, the mentality, you got to have a $100,000 piece of paper on your wall. You need a piece of paper here in Illinois to, to get a job at McDonald's. It used to be, hey... If I can't find a job, I'll go flip a burger at McDonald's. Well, around here in Woodstock, in McHenry County, which is which the health department is notorious, by the way, notorious, not CS, um, you need a piece of paper, a food handler's license to flip a burger at McDonald's. Any of you here in Illinois, in McHenry County, who've worked in the food industry or anything like that, you, you know I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, you need a food handler's license nowadays to flip a burger at McDonald's. It's that mentality. 
to when you get one of these Jesuit trained idiots trying to impress you with there was a sesquiquelian or whatever, these big sounding words trying to impress you with their knowledge that they have from Rome and not of the Lord. But all you guys that go to the Greek, all of you, all of you, wilt thou also disannul my judgment, which thou wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Yea, hath God said, ye shall be as gods. The Greek. Hast thou an arm like God? According to these guys, yes, they do. Or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and majesty and excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath and behold everyone that is proud and abase him. Look on everyone that is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. Then will I... God's sarcasm here. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. That's, that's a little every pun intended. God the Father, you know, our Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, yeah. And surprise, surprise, a lot of the Unitarian idiots are, of course, Trinitarian. Unitarian, Trinitarian? Hmm. Unitarian thing is so stupid, so carnal. It it's full of wonder. A wicked individual is the people who will fall for that stupidity because they they are their own standard, they are their own god. They don't want to give up their sin, and they want to believe in a fairy tale, fictitious, make believe Jesus who just loves you unconditionally, who isn't angry at you. God loves you. Oh, he loves you so much more than you can ever know. <laughs> but yet, you reject the Christ who is. God's love is not for you. His wrath is for you. Okay? All right? Okay? Psalm 9. Psalm 9. And again, the, the, these idiots that go to the Greek. Well, the Greek word or the Hebrew word, hade. You know, Hades or Hades, or however you want to pronounce it, is the land of the dead. Up in hell, the lake of fire, their worm dieth not. Okay? The, you, this body is not what you guys are going to have in hell. You're going to have a body in hell, and you're going to be burning forever. Okay? See, there again, the you only live once. No, you don't. Man was made a living soul. We are eternal. It's this sagging sin suit that is, you know, breaking down the law of thermodynamics. Okay? Okay? Dude? All right? Okay? But it's like, well, it's the Hades, the land of the dead. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? They call it the second death. Okay? But you're not dead in hell. You're alive feeling that flame. Okay? Why? Because your spirit, your soul is eternal. Okay? This is what's going to die. Your spirit and your soul are eternal. So your eternal soul will be burning forever in hell. And yes, to be cast into the lake of fire! Either way, Genius. You're not getting away from the burn. Well, the Greek, to hell with the Greek. Which one? Well, the 25th. Oh, you know they're on the 28th? Well, the 28th. What about the 27th and 26th? Huh? Those obsolete all of a sudden? Psalm 9. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall at and perish at thy presence. 
See, see, it's so... Sh shut up. Shut your mouth. The Lord rebuke you. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou saddest in the throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. The name of the wicked will rot. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. The destructions that you cause. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. The name of the wicked shall rot. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. Uh, I, I, I'd really like, you know, you talk with a Hebraic Jew about, you know, Hitler. Okay? A Jesuit trained individual, a Catholic. Hitler was not an atheist. He was trained by Jesuits. Okay? Okay? All right? Yes, he was. He was Catholic. He was not an atheist. You heard that from Kent Helvin. Kent Helvin is a Jesuit. Okay? Go figure. But his throne is for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. So, soul annihilationism. God's judgment. Eternal, eternity in heaven. If you have eternity in heaven... But yet there's no eternity in hell for, say, oh, Hitler. But he just burnt up and that was it. What if you're someone whose child was murdered? And that individual died who killed your child or whatever, huh? Suddenly the thought of an eternal hell sounds appealing, doesn't it? when it's close to home, but when it's even closer to home about a loved one, right? I think in James it says a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. Verse 9. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. And again, the name thing. Which name? Whose name? <laughs> well, the Greek. You guys make me sick. You, 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 you got you, you, you guys do. You know, you don't. Number one, you're not going to impress me. Okay, you will impress me with the level of your stupidity. I'll give you that. But you're not impressing me. Okay, and any of you brethren who happen to see and I don't catch it. One of these idiot Catholic people with, you don't understand the Greek, get rid of them, please. Save me the trouble of doing it, okay, please. My brethren who are, are moderate the channel here and feel free, okay. Let's continue. <clears throat> Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may shew forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down into the pit that they made. <laughs> oh, the shock to your system when you guys end up in hell. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. Hmm. How just of a God would he be if eternal damnation wasn't there? See, and you, you, you all work, base it off, well, God loves you. No, he does not. God does not love you unconditionally. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You reject the true gospel. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you, i.e. his hatred. You got a God that hates? Yes, we do. You know, you read in Revelation chapter 3, the Lord Jesus, the red words, says the thing that I hate. Oh, and the, the, he hates this... 
the sin, not the sinner, then how come he hated Esau? Doesn't say that he hated Esau's sin. He hated Esau. The heathen are sunk down into the pit that they made, and the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Oh boy, what a shock to the system you guys are going to get. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands, Hegeon Selah. The wicked shall be turned into hell, not Hales, hell. And all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail, yea, hath God said. Philosophy and vain deceit. It's amazing, it's full of wonder how philosophical a lot of these hell deniers become. Rise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Salah. Dear men. Dear men. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. 27 out of 38. 27. Psalm 37. 27 out of 38. Part from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Different dispensation. What is good? What is evil? Oh, you're the one who decides that. Not a perfect standard because you got to go to a great to a Greek lexicon, huh? And then you decide what rendering fits your agenda. <coughs> to hell with you. The impossible is possible with God, brethren. Yes, it is. I know that sounds harsh. These people are disannulling God's judgment that they may be righteous and condemning him. When you go to the Greek to correct the authorized version or even your stupid Bibles, you're disannulling him. You're your own standard. For the Lord loveth judgment. But see, you judge others. Do you judge yourself? See, the reason why I judge others is because I judge myself first by a perfect standard. And because you are judging yourself first, you judge others. By, we've, we've talked about this. By the perfect standard that you judge yourself by. But they refuse to do judgment. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seek it to slay him. Oh, they sure do. They sure do. And record your videos. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. And that's happening right now. Yet he passed away, physical death. And lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man in heart, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. See, that's against eternity in hell. No, it isn't. What is it? Keep reading. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, just one verse, verse 18. Isaiah 30, verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, 
that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. God is a God of judgment. He is known by his judgments. Okay? He is known by his judgments that he executed. What kind of God do you serve that doesn't do righteous judgment to the wicked with eternity in burning? But then again, you're serving a three-person God, so which is Satan, you know, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. We talked about that. Yeah. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. And you know what else about you people who go to the Greek? Okay. I have no respect for you. I don't. I don't take you seriously, and I have zero respect for you. I know you're a spirit, soul, and body. <clears throat> but you, you have chosen, you are of your father, the devil. You have made your choice. You are your own God. You are the enemy of my Lord. I have no respect for you. None. None. You are your own standard. I have zero. Zilch. Zip. Not a respect for any of you people who go to the Greek. You can use that for toilet paper, all I care. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to 24. But just shrun, highly favored, waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. When he forsook, then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the capital R, rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, which abomination with abominations provoked they him to anger. That's what all you guys do who go to the Greek, you are your own God. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the capital of rock that begat thee, you're all, we're all made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? Of the capital of rock that begat thee, art, begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. Abhorred means extreme hatred. You got hate. Then you got, I despise you. And then loathe or whatever. But to abhor something is extreme. Extreme hatred. Extreme. Uh, like the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict. They abhor each other. Okay? They do. It's unfortunate. But there you see the Lord abhorred them. Them, the people. Their sin? No, them. Them. Jacob he loved, but Esau he hated. It does not say he hated Esau's sin. Yes, we wrestle against, uh, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but see, this power, this, the prince of the power of the air, gets within these people. And that's what right now we have to deal with. Okay? All right? And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith except themsel in themselves. And they're Jesuit uh, cemeterians. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Themselves. You are your own standard. You're the one that picks the rendering to fit your own little equation. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. 
for fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. And I will heap mischiefs upon them, and will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them, with the poison of serpents of the dust. Also, verse 24, you can liken on to the Holocaust of the Jew, which was a form of God's judgment upon his own people. Okay? You see that hunger, not being fed the word of God, burning heat, self-explanatory, the teeth of beasts, natural, unregenerate, brute beasts, Catholics, with the poison of serpents, that old serpent, the devil, you know, the dragon, Satan, with the poison of serpents of the dust. And Cyclone B was a poison derived from, I believe it was, the venom of an asp. Cyclone B, what they used in the uh, crematoria, the showers, you know, the gas chambers. Job 26, just one verse. Job 26, verse 6. Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. Mm. Th that one bald-headed idiot from England apparently did something about, I, I know this because I was sent links, I, I, I'm not watching that guy at all. But talk about perfect hatred. What is perfect hatred? What is, well, let's read, what, what say the scriptures? Psalm 139. Well, first, Psalm 90. Psalm 90, verse 10. And yes, remember, we are not God. Psalm, oh, no, uh, one second, one second. Psalm 97, 10. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the soul of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. For what's evil? Ye who love the Lord hate evil. Well, what's evil? Who decides? What is evil? Well, the Greek, ah, you see, you see people, this, saints know this. This is why when you hear Christian talking about, you know, the Greek this, this is why you need to run away from these people. These people are evil. These people are devils. They're, they're trying to deceive you, trying to impress you with their rhetoric and their knowledge that they have that because they don't have the Lord within them. Uh, these people are evil. Okay? What's evil? Well, what's good? What's evil? Who decides? Well, the Greek says this. The Greek says that. It could mean this. It could mean that. Who decides what is what? Isaiah 5, 20 on the 25. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Rightly dividing the word of truth. These guys call that evil. Salvation changes within the dispensation. These guys call that evil. God is a God of judgment. These guys call that evil. God does not love you. They call that evil. You're going to go to hell and burn forever. They call that evil. The Greek says this. People, people, don't be deceived when you hear somebody talking with all these fancy schmancy words and you need to have a pocket dictionary on you, don't be deceived. Okay, these Christians that do that are doing that in replacement of something that isn't there, the Lord himself. Okay? Okay? Woe well, unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe well, unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. 
Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, the wine that comes from Rome, drunk with the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Okay? And men of strong, strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward. What's the reward? Self-preservation, self-gratification, popularity, a, a growing channel because you're itching people's ears, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Deck the halls there, kid. Yeah. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. The Greek, the Greek, the Greek, make me wretch. Okay? You've, you've rejected the word of the Lord. And the one who decides what is viable to your own little agenda is you yourself. Okay? Because... Ask a Jesuit trained Cemeterian textual critic which Greek is perfect. The originals. But you, you tell me they don't exist, right? And they do. They say they don't exist. So if the, the original, leave, leave this along. Okay. So the perfect standard was the originals. But they don't exist. So we don't have a perfect standard. Except you, who are trained by Rome. Woo! <laughs> and then when, and when you look at these guys who go to the Greek, look at what usually happens. Denying rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? God loves you unconditionally. Logos! Or, or that everyone's a slave. Oh, that's a good one for the description box. Okay, you're a slave, huh? Yeah. yeah, you don't have free will, huh? Yeah. God's going to save you, Calvinist, without your consent. Forcefully. God's going to hold a gun at your head. Forcefully convert you. See, the minute you get involved with the Greek, that was a stepping stone to the perfect standard, and forego the perfect standard to justify yourself, hey, dude, Hey, dude, sky's the limit. The sky is the limit. Verse 24, Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. And he has stretched forth his hand against them, and has smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Psalm, 30, uh, Psalm 139, verses 7 on to verse 12. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Okay, says. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. See, God is a lot bigger than what you people like to think. The, the argument's like, well, Jesus, was he praying to himself? Uh, you, you ever speak to yourself? No? Oh, you're one of the fortunate ones then, aren't you? Uh, the Father was the soul of the God... The, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The soul. The Godhead. Okay? The fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Father was the soul. Okay? Okay? Is the soul. Alright? The Word was made flesh. Not the flesh made the Word. Okay? you got to watch out for that one. Okay? Alright? God was in heaven but also on earth in Jesus Christ because God's a lot bigger 
than the little box, oh, excuse me, in the little triangle that you Jesuit pond scum put him in when you want God in three persons. Okay? If I ascend, verse 8, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Who runs hell? Satan? No. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. You're, you're not going to get away from God. Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. You're not hiding anything from God. God sees all, knows all. Eric. <coughs> okay? Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. You're not going to hide from God. Okay? You're not going to hide from God, dear friend. And skip down. Skip down. Perfect hatred. What is perfect hatred? Uh, in the description box, uh, again, there'll be a lot of videos, but uh, perfect hatred is simply defined right here. What is perfect hatred? Well, let's see. Let's start at verse 19 and go to the close. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly. Clue. Clue. One God and three persons speak against him wickedly. Just believe and receive. Speak against him wickedly. The Greek says, speak against him wickedly. Okay? God loves you unconditionally. Christ rejecting sinner. Yeah. Speaking against him wickedly. Okay? Surely, okay, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Christian. Take his name in vain. Take his name in vain. Christ means anointed one. Which Jesus are you talking about? You're the, uh, you follow Jesus. Which Jesus? Which Jesus? There's all kinds of Jesuses. Oh, there's the Jesus of Pentecostalism. There's the Jesus of Unitarianism. There's the Jesus of Rome with the mother of all harlots. There is a Baptist Jesus. And apparently, the scary thing is, there apparently seems to be a King James Bible-believing Christianity Jesus as well. They at least are in the right direction of the actual Jesus who is, but then again, you, you see King James Bible believing Christians, which is nothing more than a denomination of Christianity now, being Trinitarians, and there you go, you mess it all up. Speak against him wickedly. Deny hell. Deny the righteous judgment of God and an eternal hell. Speak against him wickedly. And you take his name in vain. I believe in Jesus. Christian. We never called ourselves that. Peter uses that as in comparison. It's better to die being labeled a Christian than a murderer and a thief and all that stuff. Okay, look at what it's being compared to. It's a worldly term. They called the saints that. We are saints. Period. Church of God. Period. Period. Take offense, take a gate. Like I said, when you guys get left behind, okay, that medicine, the son of perdition, is going to refer to you as Christians. I am convinced of it. You'll find out. Okay? So, God's enemies speak against him wickedly. Yea, hath God said? Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And see, the problem is when you come to this thing of perfect hatred, people will use this out of context to justify their own thing. That happens. And yes, I have been guilty of that before myself. 
We all have. But perfect hatred is simply hating what God hates, loving what God loves. Okay? If you love children, then you have to hate abortion. Okay? If you love what is good, God, then you have to hate what is evil. But it, it, don't worry about it. Oh, it. Don't hurt. Don't worry about it. You shouldn't, but don't worry about it. Man. You have God said. You know, when you read this as it is, perfect hatred is defined right there. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. Just believe and receive. You hate the Lord. Because where's repentant? Oh, that's where I shut up. God loves you unconditionally. You hate the Lord. One God in three persons, you hate the Lord. It's by grace through faith from God and reading into the kingdom of heaven. You hate the Lord. They have God said. The Greek says it could be rendered. You hate the Lord. You hate the Jesus who is. You've settled for a counterfeit. You can go to hell. You know the one that you think doesn't exist. And when you've been down there for about a thousand years waiting to be burnt up. That, see, that's stupid. You're stupid. And see, by the time you get down to hell, unlike what that idiot Unitarian guy wants you to believe, it's not a purgatory-esque thing. Okay, that's nonsense. You're not going to burn up. Your soul is not going to be extinguished. You guys take one part in the scriptures and twist it and ignoring something that I've heard the guys even go to the Greek for this. But again, ahead of ourselves, okay? Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Perfect hatred is hating what God hates. Perfect hatred is uh, the hatred for anything that is against the Lord. But which one? Which one are you talking about, pal? You talking about a trinity? Well, we, we figured that one out already. You're talking about Satan. Oh, and by the way, trinity, okay, I've made that, that my, my stand on the trinity is very well known. Okay? Believe me, I've been, what is it, what's the term, anathematized or whatever. I've been damned to hell for spitting on the trinity. How dare you? Oh, I dare. I have no fear of false gods. Okay, none. I don't fret man, and I'm not afraid of gods that aren't, except the God who is. Okay? In verse 23, the end of this psalm is imperative. Search me. If judgment begins at the house of God, see a lot of, see a lot of you guys who talk about, don't judge me, ju don't judge me. You judge, <laughs> it's funny, you judge others, but in reality, the three fingers you don't take in account. You know the three fingers that are pointing back at you? See, us saints, we judge ourselves first. That's why we judge you. By a perfect standard that we first judge ourselves. That's how that works. That's not with these fake people. Okay? But see, that's the start of a saint. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And how is he going to do that today? It's not that God doesn't know, but he's going to reveal it. He's like, show me what's wrong with me that, you know, needs work. Show me, Lord. And see, this is evident in all these guys who just point the finger at other people and don't even bother with themselves. The name of a few of them. Okay. But I'm not going to. All right? All right? Now, going over some basic things. Isaiah 14. Like I said, for the saint, this is like just going over this stuff again. But, you know, when you, got, when you guys are sending me emails, 
and stuff like that in your stupid con you sir you don't know the Greek you're right I don't don't need it or you come around saying Rome was never Babylon Babylon the, the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you ain't got time for your stupidity Rome is mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and it's not America and uh, what's that what's that guy um, oh 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 the French guy uh, that, that, that idiot Grider is saying is the, the son of perdition. I can't even remember. Macaroni. Uh, macaroni guy. is like he's the, he's the son, you know, the man of sin, the son of perdition. <laughs> uh, you guys are something else. Isaiah 14, verses 9 on verse 18. Hell from beneath is moved for thee. To meet thee at thy coming. Hell's waiting for you guys. Oh yeah. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth. The dead go down into hell. But yet their worm dieth not. Okay. You're not, in de you're not dead in hell. You're dead and in hell. But in hell their worm dieth not. I believe that is a reference onto the soul. Okay? Your soul is eternal. Let, let's continue, okay? It hath raised... Uh, okay, okay. Even all the chief ones of the earth, it hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations, and they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like, art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp! Is brought down to the grave. And these guys who go to the Greek are very arrogant. Smug. And the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee. And the worms cover thee. Tie that in with Mark chapter 9. Okay. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? What does that mean? Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? And God said, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods when good and evil. You art of your father the devil. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That did it that did shake kingdoms? That the that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? That opened not the house of the prisoners? When people see Satan for what he is. Number one, he's it's a he. He is going to be the most beautiful thing anyone has ever seen. Lucifer, Satan, going to be the most beautiful creature you have ever looked upon. That's why sin looks so good to you people. Because look who came, look where it came from. They have God's head. Okay? But they're going to, you know, we're all going to see what Lucifer looks like, Satan looks like. You know, we who go up, you know, at the redemption of the purchase possession at the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to be with the Lord when he's doing judgment. And we are going to see the uh, saints, you know, who will be likened unto the angels. We're going to see what he looks like. And all you people at the great white throne, too, you're going to see what he looks like, too. You might actually be behind him uh, at the great white throne of judgment. You never know. It's like, this is, you're the guy, you're the one. Oh, you're pretty good looking, <laughs> you know. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. Ezekiel 28, okay, that's talking about Lucifer, son of the morning. Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Or the accuser or tempter. Well, the Greek, shut up. Shut up. Ain't, ain't nobody got time for your stupidity. That's stupid. You are your own God. Lord rebuke you. 
You are your own standard. You're, you decide to your own criteria what fits your agenda. You can go to hell. You change the word of God. The word of God is supposed to change us. You can go to hell. Well, oh, but that good for you. You will. Oh. Oh. Trust me. You will. By that time, it's too late. That's one of the things that some of the atheists that I have encountered, it's like, that's all you can go to. It's like, <laughs> boy, hey, dude, you're right. I can't prove anything to you if you don't want to hear it. Okay? It's not my job to prove it to you except in my behavior, uh, you know, showing you what a saint is supposed to be in behavior and stuff like that when you don't want to hear the word. But, uh, you know, if you don't want to hear it, you know, can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. Even if you take a, what, what is it, a switch and smack them upside the head. Okay? You don't want to hear it. <laughs> that, that, see, it's, it's this thing about, you know, judgment as well. Well, I don't believe that I'm going to, well, that's tough. You're going to give an account of yourself to the very one that you reject. And then most likely, you're going to go to the very hell that you deny. Or that you try to hide with, well, the Greek, uh, the Greek this, the Greek that. Ezekiel 28, verses 16 on verse 19. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Now has sinned. This is talking about Lucifer, the, the anointed cherub. Okay. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. And we're going to see in the book of Revelation, this destruction is not an eternal destruction, meaning that they don't exist anymore, but that they're going to be in the lake of fire for eternity. See, burning forever, you're not escaping. No matter what kind of thing you want to try to circumvent it, hell is eternal. The lake of fire is eternal. More on that in a little bit. Let's continue. Uh, I will destroy the old covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Oh, look at me. I know the Greek. I can speak. I go to the lexicons and uh, all this stuff. Look at me. Oh, I just believe and receive. I, I belong to Christ's church. I'm elect. Blah, 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 blah. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquity. By the iniquity of thy traffic, with a K, I love that. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Again, everybody's going to eventually see what Satan looks like. Just like everyone eventually is going to see the Lord. We're all going to give an account to him. Saints at the judgment seat of Christ. And everyone else at the great white throne. Good luck. Doesn't have to be that way, you know. Doesn't have to be that way. But you're your own standard. You're your own God. Go to hell then. Okay? And, you know, a fire coming from thee. Got to go to this. John chapter 8, just got to mention this. Again, I already made a reference onto it, but let's mention it through Scripture, because that's what we're about. I'd have more respect for some of these guys if they... If one of these twits were to come to me, or to a saint, and be like, oh, okay, I believe John MacArthur's LSD version is the perfect and Aaron given by inspiration word of God. It isn't, but it's like, okay, you are admitting that there is at least a perfect standard other than yourself. You're totally wrong, but but see, just with James White, even MacArthur himself, it's not perfect. Well, of course, a Bible is written by man. Scripture's written by God, using man's hand, of course. But in John chapter 8, verse 44, uh, here in Ezekiel 28, this is, uh, Brother, 
whenever this comes up, make sure you always point this out. The tie-in, you know, of these lost people who say they, they, they think they're safe. It's important to tie this in for them that hopefully they'll, their eyes will be like, whoa, you know, that they get it. You know, you got to smack them sometimes. So there's a way to do it. Okay. Uh, verse 18 in Ezekiel 28. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Ye shall be as God. You will be like the Most High. The Greek says, well, I like this rendering over this rendering. He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Ezekiel 31, Ezekiel 31, verses 13 on to verse 18. Upon his ruin, ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain. All the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. To the end that none of all the trees of the waters exalt themselves for height. Now, right here, we see an example of God using in his text here about the trees, people, waters, other, you know, waters, people. You see in Revelation that the waters are likened unto nations and languages and tongues, trees. In this context is a reference unto people that are being fed by other people. Yea, hath God said, Neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees shall stand up in their height. All that drink water, for they are all for they are all delivered unto death, to the nether parts of the earth, in the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day when he went down to the grave, I caused the mourning, I covered the deep for him. And I restrained the floods thereof. And the great waters were stayed. And I caused Lebanon to mourn for him. And all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall. When I cast him down to hell with them that descended to the pit. And all the trees of Eden. The choice of the best of Lebanon. All the trees of Eden. Thou wast in the garden of Eden like it says in Ezekiel 28. Satan, Lucifer. This is talking about Pharaoh, but for our instruction in righteousness, Pharaoh is likened unto a type of Satan in Egypt, likened unto the type of all well, type of the world. Remember that, okay? All that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. Misery loves company. They also went down into hell with him, unto them that be slain, unto them that be slain with the sword. And they that were his arm, that dwell, that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. Yeah, all you guys who are following Satan, you're all going to be in hell with Satan. How? how? Wow. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, Seth, the Lord God. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Okay, now here's, now we're in the New Testament before the death, burial, and resurrection. The law was still binding. Got to rightly divide the word of truth. Matthew 25, first, just one verse, 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Now, everlasting is everlasting, but I have encountered... 
these idiot Greek people who want to justify themselves, who want to evade the truth with their yea hath God said, I've encountered this. Well, everlasting, the Greek is, dude, shut up. See, you, you don't want to accept the truth. Or, like that idiot from, bald-headed idiot from England, a Jesuit coadjutor seeking to deceive and damn people, like a lot, all of the free grace idiots. There are a couple of those guys, like that stupid Tom guy, who's too stupid for his own good. Okay? Anyway, anyway. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Everlasting is ever. Well, the Greek, shut up. Then you go to hell. Go to hell with your Greek. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Don't look, look, look at that verse. Hell was what? Prepared for the devil and his angels. To quote Rachman, to quote him, hell wasn't made for you then why are you going there, stupid? Quoting Rachman. I don't, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. But yeah. Prepare everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Well, that's not talking about hell. The Greek word. Blow it out your rear. Okay. Don't, you're, the very thing that you, well, the Greek, uh, the, the Greek word could be you're, you'll find out. You'll find out soon enough. Soon enough. And also, Revelation 12. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Quoting Rukman. Why are you going there, stupid? Huh? Why are you going there? Because you like your sin. Or you're your own God. You're more righteous than God. Because I wouldn't send someone to hell to burn forever. But yet, you anathematize someone who spits on your three-person Catholic God. <laughs> Bravo. Oh, uh, yeah. Revelation 12, verses 3 out of verse 4. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. This is Satan, by the way. Great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. And the woman is Israel. Not Mary. Okay. This woman that is being talked about is Israel. Not the Roman Catholic Mary. Okay. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. <coughs> is it not evident that our Lord sprang of Judah, the Hebraic Jews, not from Africa or England. Okay? Hey, I'm with Japheth. Okay? All right? Now skip to verse 7 on to 11. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, fallen angels. He's, yes, the devil has his own angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent from the Garden of Eden, called the devil and Satan, the accuser of the brethren, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out on into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Well, dear place, uh, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians, where are you going? 2 Corinthians 11. Oh, it is 2 Corinthians 11, right? Verses 13 on 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. You are because you say you are. <laughs> yeah. Taking, uh, their, taking his name upon them. Uh, which Jesus. Okay. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who end shall, whose end shall be according to their works, 
And see, this thing about transform that appears three times and it's not Optimus Prime, stop it, okay? Um, you see that this transforming is what? False, deceitful, transforming themselves. Like that stupid idiot. He's not stupid. He's not an idiot. I'm saying that to offend him and insult him. That bald-headed uh, um, uh, Unitarian jerk from England. Okay, that guy's an idiot. And I'm saying that to purposely offend him and insult him. Yes, I am. He is our enemy. Oh, that guy, that guy, uh, I hope, you know, and he's, he's coming popular apparently. <laughs> okay, I hope the Lord shut him up soon. He's dangerous. Anyway, anyway. Back to Revelation 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren, Satan, is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Okay? Okay? Now, go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Okay? He <laughs> did. Uh, dude. And I'm, you don't have to forgive in order to be forgiven. That's for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The, 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 the devil free gracers get this one right themselves. They get this one right. Okay? Forgive in order to be forgiven, that's a work. Okay? Today we're not saved by works of righteousness, which we have done, but by His grace through faith. The law was right, is righteous and holy, but the law is not of faith. See, forgiving in order to be forgiven is a work. And even the free gracers, most of them, not all of them, most of them get that one right. That's a work. It's not applicable for today. The Sermon on the Mount, you idiot. Hey, and, and you guys who don't know, I'm not calling that. I'm not calling you an idiot. I'm not. I'm calling these people who know and reject. The Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Faith is mentioned one time. It's all works. That's why you devils like it. And you try to, unless you forgive, you're not going to be forgiven in the kingdom of heaven. Not today. Not today. Should you forgive? Yes. Because if you don't, bitterness will spring up. It will mess up your testimony. Your fruit will stink. You'll have gut problems. You, you, just a horrible testimony. But see, is there a salvific meaning pertaining to salvation quality for that today. No! But see, you guys are your own God. You go to the Greeks. So hey, it all blends together. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, 29 and 30. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body be cast into hell. Okay, hell. Hell is real. Okay? And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Okay? Hell. Alright? Okay? And Matthew 10, Matthew 10, 28, Matthew 10, 28. Okay? Here is the verse <laughs> that these soul annihilationist twits askew. Right here. Right here. Let's read this verse very, very carefully. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able, not Cain, able to kill the soul, 
but rather fear him which is able, meaning he can, to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now these, and I've, I've encountered this as well with this verse too. Well, able, the Greek is, Yea, hath God said, you, you hate the Lord. You hate what he's written. You don't like it because it offends you. Well, whatever it is. Look at that verse. It says, But rather fear him which is able. He can. It does not say that he will. Actually, the opposite is true. God, yes, God can annihilate a soul. Yes, he can. But it, nowhere does it say that he will annihilate the soul. Doesn't say that. Actually, the opposite is true. Okay? This verse right here, okay, these guys will come to and say he's able to, and instead of going with what it actually says, able to, he's able to do that. Doesn't say that he will. They put into it that soul annihilationism well see he's a merciful god he loves you unconditionally yes you're going to go to hell but you're only going to burn for a little then he's not a just god the god you're talking about is not truly god okay all right now now go to matthew 18 verses 7 and 9 okay matthew 18 verses 7 and 9 on to 9 Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs that must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man to, by whom the offense cometh. You're preaching another Jesus, another gospel, denying hell. The Greek says, Yea, hath God said, the church that Christ founded, believe and receive, you're elect, non elect. Uh, woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. You're an offense to the Lord. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off, cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And I've encountered this too. Everlasting, the Greek, it, shut up, dude. You just want to justify yourself. You, you want to deny the eternality of hell. People, when someone says, well, the Greek word here, reject them. They are their own standard. They have no perfect standard except themselves. They are of their father, the devil. Okay? Reject them. Don't take them seriously. God forbid. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Everlasting you can't get away from unless you go to a myriad number of Greek manuscripts, right? And then even the Greek word, it could mean this, it could mean it's so many other things except everlasting what God has said. This, this is why, brethren, this is why. Don't take these guys seriously. Yeah, they're, they're a threat to the Lord in that they are to be taken seriously. They're not a threat to the Lord, but they make him look bad by pretending to be of him when they all the while they're saying, yea, hath God said. Like I said, I have no respect, none, for anybody who goes to the Greek. I don't have any respect for you. None. Come around here with your nonsense. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't nobody got time for that. You're out. I ain't, I'm not even going to listen. You're barking up the wrong tree. Okay? Now, now see, we've seen twice. Uh, uh, where, where are we at? In Matthew um, 29, Matthew 5, 29, 30, we saw in Matthew 18, everlasting. Everlasting fire. Mark. Chapter 9. Well, the Greek. You know, the Greek. You, 
You can tell with the Greek. Yeah, especially the ones <laughs> that are in Rome. Okay? All right? Texas Receptus, which agree with each other. There are varying additions. One by this dude, one by that dude, one by that dude. They agree far more together, over 90%, than the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus and Aleph, the other one, that barely agree with each other. Uh, some ridiculous, like 20 or 30%. Okay? You get right down to the number thing of it. But see, Greek, Hebrew, Latin, German, um, oh, I, I can't even remember, Hebrew and stuff like that, Aramaic, uh, those were stepping stones to the final product, English. Okay? Mark chapter 9, 43 and verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Well, the fire will bur always burn, but the salt. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Um, in your Bible, there, Christian, is verse 46 and 48 there? Is it? You know, when the Lord does twice mention, you better listen. When the Lord says something three times in a parable, oh, you could take that to the bank. But yet, the Greek says... You see how wicked that is? See, in the Bibles, like the verse, uh, right there, verse 44, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. The worm dieth not, I believe, is a reference onto the soul. It doesn't die. You're not going, your, your soul is not annihilated. You're going to burn forever in a fire that will never be quenched. Okay. You think hell getting cast into the lake of fire is you're going from fire to fire. Genius. Okay. But the Greek it, uh, see how dangerous this is? And see in the Bible some of them, not all of them, they take out verse 46 and 48 where it's the same thing as mentioned in verse 44. Well they already mentioned, but see the fact that the Lord mentions it twice then three times Dude, that means you better take what the Lord says seriously. You know, the Lord, Lord, twice mentioned, which will be in the description box for you. But when the Lord says it three times, you can take that to the bank. But, yeah, hath God said the Greek. Watch out for these people. They're not saved. They're Christians. Oh, they're Christians. But they're not saved. They're leading you people to hell and deceiving you by rhetoric of intelligence which is there to replace the Lord and the Lord is that spirit in them that they don't have. Okay? Wow, thank you. Let's continue. And if thy foot offend thee, and again, he's not talking about literal mutilation. Okay? If your hand offend thee, what are you touching? Repent of it. Stop it. And if thy foot offend thee, where are, you, where are your feet taking you? And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Okay? That's twice mentioned for the fire that shall never be quenched. Oh, but there's so... Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So we see in verse 43, into the fire that never shall be quenched, one. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched, one. 45... Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Hell. Verse 46. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Well, the Greek, the hell with your Greek. Okay? I have a perfect standard. Which you hate. Because it condemns you. And with a lot of you, it's damning you. Because you are your own God. You are your own standard. Verse 47. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. Hmm. Uh, did I skip one? 
No, no, I didn't. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God spiritual with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Third time. And see, when they remove verse 48 and verse 46, that authoritative, hey, I say the same thing to you three times. You better take, you better pay attention to what I'm saying. That's why the Bibles are evil. The NIV, the ESV, LSD, non-King James Version, which has all the verses, but they skew, they twist it all, okay? Because it's a blend of Alexandrian and Antiochian, okay? But three times the Lord said this. Unless you've got a Bible, he only says it once. That three times, twice mentioned is serious. Lord, Lord! Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, says unto you three times, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. The worm dieth not, the soul, I believe. Well, the Greek, shut up. You guys deny the Lord. You guys deny the word of the Lord. There is no perfect standard to you than something that doesn't exist. Hence, you have no perfect standard except yourself and your own feelings and your own emotions. Blah, 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 blah. You scum. And you're damning people to hell. Damning people to hell. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. It's 22 and 31. Rich man and Lazarus. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Abraham's bosom was in the earth. Um, oh, the video. Um, I can't remember which it was about. Um, oh, about Samuel being called up. Oh, I can't remember which one. I'll find that. But Samuel what came up to see Saul. It was actually Samuel. Why didn't he descend down? Because the dead before the death, burial, and resurrection, before the death, burial, and resurrection, heaven was not open. They went down into the earth, into Abraham's bosom, where hell is, too. Yeah, let's read. Let's read. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. That's why it's like when you run into people who don't want to hear the truth, I say unto them, have, have a great life, dude. You Catholic who brought up that stupidity about Babylon, what did I say to you when I blocked you? I said, dude, sorry, I don't got time for your stupidity. Okay? Have a great life, dude. Yeah. Yeah, because this is your best life now and this is the best life you're ever going to have. Okay? All right? And besides this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. No one is going to be in hell, and then burn for a little while, and then go to heaven. That's, that's, that's purgatory. That's the teaching of purgatory. How come you didn't bring that up? Ah, well, your fellow Jesuit, of course. Anyway, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they come into this place of torment. Torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. You have the scriptures. Yea, hath God said the Greek, though, right? 
And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one would but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. I like this verse. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. If you reject the scripture of truth, the authorized version, God's perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word. The final product, as it were. You have what God said here. You reject this, neither will ye be, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. How can ye believe, ye that seek honor one from another, and not go unto the Lord that ye may have life? The scriptures talk. You know what that is? That's John 5. That's John 5. That's John 5. Go to John chapter 5. Verse 39 on 47. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify me. Uh, uh, testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. Oh, because you love yourself, you are your own God. I am come in my Father's name. Jehovah saves Jesus. And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Calvin. Luther. Hiles. Ruckman. MacArthur. Jesuit James. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses in whom ye trust. They say they trust, but they didn't believe the scriptures. You don't believe the scripture when you're going to the Greek. It's like when you mention the Bible and you're going to the Greek. It's like, dude, how? I don't under I don't understand when someone you know, well, the Greek. You go to the Greek, but yet you're going to quote a Bible. How how is anyone supposed to treat you seriously? Think of you in any way other than a laughing stock. See, that's the point too. That's the point. It's part of the theatrics of it all. Christianity was developed by Satan to make the faith that was once delivered onto the saints to look like a mocking thing, a laughing stock because of what Christianity is. And that's not the faith that is once delivered onto the saints. That was once delivered onto the saints. So because there is this false thing called Christianity, you people see that and equate that to the faith that was once delivered onto the saints, which it isn't. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. For he wrote of me. And see, right there, the Lord is uplifting the scriptures. These guys, like it says in Isaiah 28, you know, these guys just because they think they're reading the scripture without believing it so. How can you how can you believe it? If you're well the Greek, well the Greek, the, the Greek, the Greek, the Greek, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Hebrew. <laughs> why why even read it at all then? If all you're gonna do is look at it and say, well the Greek, the Greek. The, hey, hey, how come you ain't going then if you're doing anything? How come you don't have a Greek? Hey, you! You know, you like to go to the Greek, the, the Greek, the Hebrew, the Greek, the Greek, which one? Okay! All right there, tough guy. If you're all about the Greek to co correct the English and this is the superior, why aren't you reading this? Hmm? Answer me. Why ain't you? See, that's the Hebrew. This is the Hebrew of the Texas Receptus. Okay, uh, hey, that's right. That's from right to left. Okay, okay there's the Hebrew. And oh, 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 here, here, here's, here's the Greek. Huh? Here's the Greek. Okay? 
the Greek, the Greek, the Hebrew, the Hebrew. Okay, why aren't you using this then? Mr. Jesuit scholar, huh? There are some out there, but then again, is this perfect? Well, no. No, only the originals. This, of course, it was just a copy. <laughs> so there is no perfect standard again. How come you ain't using this? But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Yeah, when you're constantly going to the Greek, dude. How? 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 But then again, like I said, it's, you know, speaking smooth things, prophesying. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now, here's an argument that these guys uh, like to bring up too. Go to Acts 2, okay, about the not being in hell or that it's only temporary or that someone can get out of it. Acts 2, 26 on to 31. Acts 2, 26 on to 31. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because I will not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. That's capital H, capital O, reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And no, our Lord did not pay for our sins in hell like Stephen Anderson teaches. Okay, no, he did not. He went down to Abraham's bosom, to the spirits that were in prison. Okay? All right? Abraham's bosom was a form of prison. They were being held there. Okay, Prison doesn't always necessitate a negative connotation rather than a place of holding. Okay? More on that in a minute. All right? Uh, wait, wait, I lost my place. 26, okay. Because I will not... Okay, we read verse 27. And those, that's a capital H and O there. Okay? Verse 28. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make full, make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, yes, David was a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Son of David, King of the Jews. He seen this before, spake of his resurrection, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Now right there ought to tell you that that is talking about Christ. And what they are uh, purposely messing up is Psalm 16. Okay? And these guys will go to that part in Acts or come here and said, See? You can get out of hell. No, you can't. It's not talking about us anyway. This is a prophecy of Christ. Uh, Psalm 16, verses 8 under verse 11. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy capital H, Holy, capital O, one, to see corruption. Thou wilt shew me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. First Peter 3. Okay. Abraham's bosom was in the earth. Okay. Abraham's bosom was in the earth. Hell is in the earth. Okay. 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter 3, 19 on to 22. Come on, man, what's this? 1 Peter 3, 19 on to 22. Right away. Uh, you know what? Let's read verses 18 on to 22. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, Catholic. Not daily, with your little stupid Baalite Satan cookie, okay, which the Jesuit priest, Ad Majorem the Glorian, raises the rising of the sun. It's Baal worship, you satanic devils, okay? 
For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the capital S spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Prison, talking about those that are in Abraham's bosom. Because the way of, to heaven was not open because the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. So they went down into Abraham's bosom. Down to the spirit. Uh, by which he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Which sometimes were disobedient. Referencing under the law. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. And duh, duh, water baptism is not a requirement for salvation. Okay, that will be, there will be a video for that in the description box, refuting that Catholic nonsense. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. It says it right there. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Water baptism is a public profession of an inner conversion. Answer of a good conscience. You get baptized. It's not salvific. It is not. Ah, 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 in the description box, baptism. Okay? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Again, shut up. Water baptism refuting that will be in the description box for you. Choke on that. Okay? Now, 2 Peter 2, verses 4 on to verse 10. All right? For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, who was prepared for the devil and his angels, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. More hint that in hell, the, you're, it's going to be darkness and you're going to be burning in darkness and blackness and screaming, weeping and gnashing of teeth forever. Okay? And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed it with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Just Lot, okay, and his two daughters, okay? For that righteous man, Lot was a righteous man, dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the judgment of unto the day of judgment to be punished. In a moment? No. The worm dieth not. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh. In the, lust, in the lust of uncleanness, and despise government, self-government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Self-willed. Oh, you're more righteous than God for loving Satan and forgiving Satan. Okay, that, that's crazy. You're, you're, you're your own God because you save yourself. You're more, you know more than God because you correct him with the Greek. Which one? Here's another interesting one that people bring up. Uh, this one is with uh, the Pentecostal idiots, uh, and I'm being polite, <laughs> who like to say, you know, oh, well, Jonah. Jonah went to hell. He got out of it. Okay. But <laughs> there's something you're not intuiting. And I ran into an individual a while ago who tried to use Jonah to justify these idiots who go to hell come back and tell you all these stories about what it was like in hell that always contradict what scripture says. Or they go to heaven and they come down and write a book and make a movie of it. 
when Peter, or excuse me, when Paul, Paul, not Peter, when Paul went up to the third heaven where God is and saw things that were not lawful for him to utter. But yet, you got that little punk burpo. Have his for real. He went up and, and that came out. He, he was lying to his teeth. He even admitted that. You know, Duplantis, he went to heaven and saw, or that one guy, 20 minutes in hell. I went to hell and saw hell. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Well, Jonah did. What about our man Jonah? What about our man Jonah? Okay? Jonah chapter 1. Uh, Jonah here is an exception. Why? Now, jo Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 and 3. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amatai, saying, Rise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. God said, go do that. Under the law. Death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. Eternal security was not there. Not by grace through faith. Okay? God said to Jonah, do this. What did he do? But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And we already read in Psalm 139 where you're going to go from the Lord. Okay? And went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Jonah chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Where was he? In the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. And there are these people, Pentecostals, and these stupid universalist idiots. You're stupid. You're a universalist. I, I don't apologize. You're stupid. I hope you have a great life. May your God, Satan, provide everything you need and want and all your petty little carnal fleshly desires. And I hope you have a great life. I hope you live by reason of strength to 80 years. I hope you, I hope you get to see the world in a moment of time. I hope you do everything your vile little heart wants you to do. Because at the end, you're going to burn in hell for eternity. To eventually be cast into the lake of fire, which is eternal as well. Getting ahead of myself. But they come to this. It's like, see? Jonah was in hell and he cried out. Uh, okay, look at chapter 3, verse 1, on to verse 3 again. Oh, and verse 4, on, on to verse 4. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Stop. The Lord said to Jonah, Hey, go do this. Jonah's, uh-uh. Jonah gets sway, uh, swallowed by fish, goes down into the belly of hell, okay? The Hebraic Jewish people. The Lord came unto his own, and his own received him not. Okay? All right? Salvation has come unto us Gentiles grafted into the tree of the Jew. All right? Something's going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble when eventually Jewry is going to turn onto their Mashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. And afterwards, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Rise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. I told you to do something. I'm going to put you through stuff you don't even want to go through till you finally come to do what I told you to do. Jonah. And what did he preach? Did he preach that I went to hell and saw hell? Huh? Huh? Did he? No. What did he do? So Jonah arose and went on to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and cried, I'm in the hell and I've got, a, I've got all this message for it. No. What did he say? And he said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's all he said. Did he glorify the fact that he was in the belly of hell? Did he glorify the fact that he came up and saw all this stuff and made a movie or book out of it? No. No. 
This was a specific circumstance for a prophet who died a natural death, but for this context, showing us that what? God said do something. Not going to do it? Okay, I'm going to make your life miserable. Then he eventually, he's like in chapter 2, he's like, all right. <laughs> Jonah's like, all right, what is it? Um, verse 8, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies, mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Alive. Okay? This is a specific special circumstance that can be linked, likened on to Israel eventually turning to their Messiah. Okay? Like it talks about in Romans chapter 11. Okay? You cannot go to this to point that someone will go to hell, cry out, and then get out of hell like this, and then go and go. And what did Jonah preach? Nothing. <laughs> Yet 40 days, and then I shall be overthrown. That's it. Well, the Hebrew, shut up. Okay? Watch out for that. And that I've run into that too. I've run into that one too. Well, Jonah did. Duh, you, you're crazy. <laughs> okay? You're taking something here for a specific dispensation that has implications for something that doesn't even concern us today and trying to weave that in that someone can go to hell and get out of it and then go about and preach about it. Roll you up another one. Crack yourself a bottle of rum or whatever you're going to do. Have a great life. Have a great life, dude. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. First, just two verses. 19 and 20. And I saw the beast and the king of the earth and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and the image that worshipped, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, like fire. Fire. Hell, burning, like fire. Burning. The worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. See, you, okay, burning to burning. Genius. But the Greek, oh, you go to hell. This is where you're going, okay? Uh, Revelation 14, by the way, uh, verses 10 on to verse 12. Revelation 14, verses 10 on to verse 12. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Oh, the Greek. Oh, shut up. Forever and ever. Eternal torment. I don't know why someone would want to believe in eternal conscious torment. That's what the book says. Okay. Well, where were we? Where were we? Reading? Uh, Ten on the twelve. Okay. Verse eleven. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Sendeth up forever and ever. No rest day or night. Eternal. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And the faith of Jesus. Works and faith. During the time of Jacob's trouble. Watch out for these free gracers. Who say it's by grace through faith. They're saying that to damn you to hell. To take the mark of the beast. Okay. Revelation chapter 20. 
this is the and remember when it comes to the book of Revelation with Sinaiticus and Vaticanus and the Bibles the book of Revelation is the most messed with book out of all of Scripture with these uh, fake uh, corrupt Greek manuscripts that are at Rome I wonder why Revelation 20 and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years and it's during that thousand years when Satan is bound sin is still going to be there okay sin is not eradicated yet okay until the end of this okay but it's during that thousand years when the kingdom of heaven will be and that's all works let's continue and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had he received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years the kingdom of heaven and notice how it's talking about what was in the book of Revelation why is that because the redemption of the purchased possession which happens in chronological order in Revelation chapter 4 the body of Christ be taken out of the way before all this stuff starts to happen. Us today, we at the judgment seat of Christ. After the judgment seat of Christ, which is for us saints, it's the great white throne of judgment. Okay? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And they point, well, second death, they're got, it's second death, meaning cast into the lake of fire for eternity. You can do all your little Jesuitical gymnastics, the Greek says it, eternal torment in hell, which, the lake of fire, which doesn't happen long until after the thousand years the kingdom of heaven by the way and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison kingdom of heaven Satan is let loose okay and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog together to gather them together to battle. Sin will still be present on the earth during the kingdom of heaven. Read the, and, and during the kingdom of heaven, these thousand years, that's when the Sermon on the Mount will be applicable. That's when you will have to forgive in order to be forgiven. All works because Jesus is going to be on a throne and you're going to be able to see him. Okay? Then after that, after the thousand years, you know, Jesus doesn't go anywhere. But after a thousand years, Satan is let loose, okay? And then goes to do what? Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. You have people saying that today, the Gog and... The, we, we don't have to be concerned about you. Nobody has to be concerned about the battle of Gog and Magog for a long time. A long time, okay? Oh, unless, of course, the book of Revelation is chronological, then you can put it, put it wherever there, wherever you want. Because you're your own God, right? Uh. Huh. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together, gather to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And there went up on the breadth of the earth, and they went up upon the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil 
that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. There's your trinity. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. There's your trinity right, right there. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Well, that's just them. No. Well, yeah, they're going to be down there tormented for it, but with the scriptures we have already read, okay, it was prepared for the devil and his angels, but you put yourself there because you reject the Lord, okay? And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great people who had died stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works dead meaning that they had died in this you and I are made in the image of God we have a spirit we have a soul we have a body your soul is eternal your spirit is eternal this isn't okay so the dead people who died okay their worm dieth not the soul does not get extinguished and notice according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And the wages of sin is death. And they were judged every man according to their works. Twice again. And death and hell. The wages of sin is death. No more death. And hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Not meaning that's it. You're an eternal being. You you have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Okay? Your spirit and soul don't die. The second death meaning the final judgment into the lake of fire where hell goes. And see the that trinitarian idiot he was likening hell onto purgatory, but also somewhat getting the lake of fire right. But see, hell, where the fire is never quenched, it's never quenched because you're going from one burning to another burning. Eternal. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Three books. Three books. My personal favorite video that the Lord ever had me to do. Hell is eternal. You are being lied to. And you are being willful. A lot of you are being willfully deceived. But see, that doesn't change the truth. The truth is, unless you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name and he save you and seal you. If he doesn't save you, you're going to go to hell. And yes, eventually hell will be cast into the lake of fire. Dude, no matter how you slice it, you're going to burn forever. Forever. Your Greek isn't going to change that. This, the authorized version, is the sword that proceedeth out of his mouth. This is what you're going to be judged by. And you can deny it, hide it. Like I said, brethren, most of these guys, especially when they start going for the Greek thing, uh, that's very difficult. Only a miracle can save a person.
Revelation 20, 22. Verses 11 on to the very close of the scriptures. Then we'll be done. Brother, sister, when you got someone who is their own standard, who exalt themselves by, well, the, the Greek says this, the Greek says that, it could mean this. It, that, the impossible is possible with God. And most of the time, with at least with my experience, it's like, okay, dude, I'm going to somewhere, I'm, <laughs> roll it up, man, drink it up, have, have a great life. This is this the best one you're going to get? And see, the sad thing is, you people who deny the eternality of hell, that deny hell, period. Lord, save me. I'm going to heaven when I die. I'm going to, I'm going to see the Lord. I want to be with the Lord when I die. I can't imagine the shock that all of you who deny the Lord refuse Him I can't imagine the shock you're going to get when you are standing before the very one who isn't going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus by the way when you are standing before the very one that all your life you're deni you denied or claimed that you served and it wasn't really Him anyway and then when you are cast off into that very hell that you believed didn't exist, or you stupidly believed that it was going to you burn up for a little and then extinguish after a thousand years of not being burnt up, only to be cast into the lake of fire to burn for eternity without end, Live it up, dude. Go ahead. Do whatever you want to do. Go ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> Watch your Hollywood movies. Smoke your marijuana. Drink your alcohol. Go ahead. Watch your pornography. Live it up, boy. You don't know and you don't want to, go, want to know. Therefore, you're stupid. I have no pity for you or compassion. I'm sorry. If you're that stupid, live it up, pal. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Let them alone, brother. They're the blind leading the blind. If blind lead the blind, where are they going to go? And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me. He is our reward, our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't separate the reward from who Christ is himself. Jesus, the Jesus of the scriptures is our reward. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers. Mongers and murderers and idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You are of your father the devil. The Greek says this. The Greek, the Greek, the Greek. Believe and receive. The church that Christ founded. I'm elect because of my skin color. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root, the offspring of David. The bright and morning star. Not Son of the morning. You got a Bible? 
check your reference. Does it reference Isaiah 14? It does, doesn't it? You got a you got a Bible that comes from Rome, son. Well, hey, you might see it in your authorized version of the scriptures too, right? Remember this. The text, the text is what's inspired. <laughs> the references aren't. Because in some um, authorized versions, I have seen references to, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, Thessalonians 2, they reference Matthew 24. Those are two different things. Okay? The text itself is what's inspired. The references, unless they are in the text, are not. Don't forget that. And the capitalist spirit and the bride, the body of Christ, say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, free will. Let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Sure, this book, the Rev book of Revelation. What is the most, yea, hath God said book there is in all of Scripture? According to Rome, the book of Revelation. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I'm sure have some time again after chew cabbage again, but I don't care. That's, you know, this thing about hell. Um, that's, if you're not saved by the Christ who is, you're going to hell. And yes, eventually hell will be cast into the lake of fire. See, th this is what you don't want to accept. Unless the Lord save you, you're going to hell. You're going to burn forever. Okay? You climb up some other way with your free grace, Catholicism, Calvinism, whatever it is. You're a thief and a robber. You climb up some other way. You boot the door out of the way because you are your own God. You don't get saved by our Lord Jesus Christ by the way of the cross, the way he elected. And if he doesn't save you, you're going to go to hell. You are going to burn forever. And no Greek lexicon that you can find to justify yourself is ever going to change that fact. Yea, yeah, hath God said, right, pal? Live it up, dude. Live it up. Clap your hands. Give your money to Rome. Eat the cookie. Drink. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you will die. Go ahead. But you know what? You're going to be reminded every day in hell in the lake of fire every day when you're burning you're going to be reminded as the rich man was that you didn't have to be there but you will be like the most high and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil you poor egocentric sap god have mercy on your soul